Hello and welcome to chapter 7, part 2. In this part, we're taking a look at the save game object and how we can save our details for loading the game in future. So I'm going to go to my game settings folder and in here I'm going to create a new blueprint class. I'm going to search in the all classes box and if that's not there you can just hide it and show it with this little icon here. And you're going to search for a save game object. Choose this and we're going to call this one save game object. Open it up. Now the way saving works is that this object is what's going to be saved and stored into the game files. So all the variables that you need to be saved need to be put onto this actor. So the variable we need to save is the current level we're on. So I'm going to go into my variables on the left hand side here, new variable and I'm going to go current level. And this can be a variable type of a name. Hit compile. The default value for this is going to be maze1. And compile. Let's close this, we're done with that. Next, we're going to go into our maze game instance. In our blueprint for this, we're going to right click and type in the word init. So I N I T. And this is an event called event init. And this basically means when the game first loads up. When the game first loads up, we want to get the save game object and see if there's one already there. If it's there, we can load it up. If it's not, we can create one. So to do that, let's first of all set up a name for our save slot. So I'm going to go into my variables list and add a new variable called save slot name. And this will be a string. After the event init, we're going to check for save game and check for does save game exist. This requires a slot name, which is that variable we just made. We're going to drag that over. Compile this and set the default value for your save slot name to whatever you like. I'm going to call it save slot. If it does exist, this will go into a boolean. into a branch. If it does exist, this will come out true. So therefore, we want to put this into a branch. If it's true, we want to load details of that save slot. So, in true, we can go load game from slot. And the slot name is our slot name. And the return value here is a save game object reference. After we load the game from slot, we want to cast this return value to our custom save game object. We need to do that because we have our current values and variables that we want to store and save on there. So as save game object, we want to promote that now to a variable and we call this save game data. Now save game data is now stored and loaded up, ready for us to use. Click compile. So that's the loading. Now what about if the save game does not exist already? Then we're going to come down here and we're going to go create save game object. And you want to choose your save game object class that we made previously. The return value for this then is going to be stored in that reference we made previously. So drag that down and choose set and plug that in like so. Hit compile. So now we've got it set up, so we're checking if the save game exists, that matches the name we've given it. If it does exist, we're loading that data up, casting it to our particular save game object, and saving that data as a reference. We now can access that reference whenever we want by getting access to our instance. If the file does not exist, we're going to create a new save game object and store that as our save game data. So once we've got that, we can close our game instance. So what I want to do is I want to go onto my win UI and click on graph. When we click next level on open level here, we want to actually store this level name in the instance. 
So before we open level, we want to store this in the game instance. So right click, get game instance, and cast that to our maze game instance. As maze game instance, we now have access to that save game object. So get the save game data, and then from there, we can set the current level. The current level is going to be this value that we get from the get, and then we can use this to go into the open level. Where we set that value there, we're now going to tell it to save that data. So right click and do save game to slot. The save game object will be the save game data we got here. The slot name will come from our maze game instance. Get save slot name. And then plug that in like so. So this now is going to save the data to our game slot. Drag that into open level to finish off the connection. Hit compile and we're going to go into our main menu. So on our menu, we click play, and we go new game. So that was at level one. We head over to our platform, win level, and click next level. It loads at level two. Now it should have saved the data to that slot. If I were to now escape out of here and push play, and then click on continue, you can see now it's now loaded me up into level two. At the moment I can't move, that's because I forgot to go into our main menu and tell that when we click on continue that we want to change the input mode that we've got here to game only. So I'm going to put that at the end like so. Push play, click on continue and now we have gameplay. And that is it. And that's how we make a save game object for our game. So currently it's only saving the data based on what level we're on, but if you want to save any extra stuff, I'm sure you can have a crack at trying to figure that one out. And that will do it for this chapter. Thanks very much for watching this chapter. So let's recap what we've done in this chapter. In the first part, we created another level and we went through creating a game instance to store a list of all the levels inside our game. Then in part 2, we create a save game object. In that object, we are able to store the level, current level we're on, and then load that data from the main menu. In the next chapter, we'll be doing some finishing touches, final polishes, and final bug fixes. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.